is the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta Tour de France. It's a car named after the legendary race. No, not that one, the other one. The Tour de France Automobile. They called it the toughest car race in history. An entire lap of France, 4,000 odd gruelling miles over 10 days on road, track and dirt. The Tour de France made the Le Mans 24 hours look like a Sunday fun run. It ran for nearly a century, but its glory days were the end of the 1950s, where this Ferrari 250 Tour de France cleaned up, winning every year it competed. Only 77 were ever made, and this one is worth five million pounds. They were easy to drive long distance, and they were reliable, but they were also quick. This one can do 160 miles an hour. Which is thanks to a three litre V12 producing 250 horsepower, which by 1950 standards was a lot. Like into this hairpin. Second, heel and toe. First, wow. Bit of understeer. Get on the gas early, grab second. Listen to the noise. My first day in the job. Can't believe they've given me a five million pound Ferrari to throw around. Wouldn't make the best introduction to the BBC insurance department, would it? Hi, yeah, Chris here. New bloke. The Tour de France race didn't just run on road, they'd also stop off for a blast around any track they found along the way. Tracks like this one. Circuit, Paul Ricard. Fast, technical, and boasting one of the longest straights of any track on the planet. Just the place then, to let the old girl off the leash. My first chance to open it up. Yes. It doesn't get any better. That end is that gearbox. It's really hard not to imagine yourself as some gentleman racer from the late 50s. What a life to lead. What a bit of oversteer. This is the most powerful V8 Ferrari ever made. It'll do naught to 60 in around three seconds. But then so does every other grown-up supercar these days. What really matters here is that from a standing start, after 10 seconds, it's doing 140 miles an hour. 10 seconds! Crikey, that's fast. And the 488's comprehensive rewrite doesn't stop at the engine. A quarter of a million pounds also buys you F1 grade aerodynamics and an exhaust made of Inconel, which is the same stuff they use in rocket engines. Inside, meanwhile, Every inch of the interior has been pared back to save 90 kilos in weight. All of which makes the Pista about nine tenths of a racing car for the road. Which comes with its downsides. But if you're going to go pared back and minimal, at least make sure it's pleasant. I mean, this seat here, it's as bony as an old donkey. And what's less of the dash, well, it's 10 years old. It's from a Ferrari 458. And then there's this thing down here. It's a carbon fibre sort of spur with buttons on it. It looks like a medieval sex toy. Beneath the threadbare surface, however, lurks a lot of very clever electronic assistance. But not the boring stuff that boings to warn you that you're wandering out of your motorway lane or that there's a scooter in your blind spot. Oh, no. The Pista's computers concern themselves with something far more exciting. Drifts on demand. <laughs> Ferrari calls it Side Slip Angle Control 6. 
basically will tickle a brake alongside the electronic differential to keep you in line. Or rather, out of line. It's genius! Sliding a 700 horsepower Ferrari shouldn't be this easy. But the piece that makes it child's play. There's no question that with the Pista, Ferrari has done it again. <laughs> what you're looking at is the new benchmark for the Track Focus supercar. It is bonkers fast. Just north to 60 in under three seconds. Top speed. 211 miles an hour. But the TDF isn't really about speed. It's about downforce. The dark art of gluing a car to the ground through the power of air alone. It's not pretty, but it's all functional. This big mouth gulps in the air, then it extracts it through this nostril, then in again into this intake here where it gets accelerated down the side of the car. And these gills are fully functional because they reduce the pressure in that wheel arch. And then everything gets kicked over this new rear spoiler and there are even flaps down there underneath that adjust to give you more downforce. But of course, it's also an excuse for some beautiful details. Everything's carbon and little bits that stick out everywhere. This car also has something Ferrari calls Passo Corto Virtuali, where the TDF's rear wheels turn slightly in the opposite direction to its fronts. They say this makes cornering more nimble. I say more scary. Ferrari said it created this car to be challenging, to be a bit of an animal. By George, it is. I'm using about a quarter throttle here in third gear, and I'm completely sideways. I don't think I've driven a car that wants to oversteer more readily. That was 90 miles an hour, and I absolutely love it. It's a difficult car to control, but would you want it any other way? Should Ferrari make cars that everyone can drive? All supercars now can be driven by complete idiots. The world needs cars that are difficult to drive. Compared to the normal F12, then, the TDF is easier to crash and less easy on the eyes. And it costs £100,000 more. But none of that matters. You want a car that makes the hairs of your neck stand up, that makes every nerve in your body dance like it's in some insane 90s rave every time you push the throttle. This is it. This is that car. The performance of the FXXK is so extraordinary, it recalibrates your understanding of what a car is capable of. It's wonderful, intoxicating. It's so cutting edge, it's... I've got quite high water temperature now, so I need to just cool it down. Well, it's high maintenance. And that means your pit crew will spend a lot of time fiddling about with stuff you don't understand. Needs a reset on the... Uh... And this ultimate Ferrari thoroughbred is so extreme, you can't drive it on the road, and it doesn't qualify for any existing race series. So as a car, the FXXK doesn't really make sense. But it's not meant to. It's not really a car. What it is, is a ticket. To the most exclusive private members club on the planet. And this club has one final members only benefit. You see, up to now, the car has been holding back saving power to make sure its batteries never run flat. But the FXXK has something called Qualify Mode, and that gives you all the petrol power and all the electric power in one massive hit. Maximum attack for one lap only, and, well, since I've only got one lap left, well, you can't take it with you.
the last lap. Unbelievable. I'll never get to do that again. I'm staggered I've had a chance to do it in the first place. When the world's electric, I think I'll remember this day more than every other. Thank you.